We're live from Varnum, Oklahoma to watch the Sasakwa Vikings versus the Varnum Whippets. There's about 11 minutes, 11 and a half minutes left in pregame for this girls matchup where the Sasakwa Lady Vikings are going to be playing against the Varnum Lady Whippets tonight. Tonight, a special night here in Varnum, Oklahoma. As a tribute to Haley Self, everyone's wearing purple. Both teams on the court right now wearing purple, which is a great show of solidarity. The community suffered a great loss with Haley, but, you know, we, we want to keep her family in, her, in your thoughts and prayers or in our thoughts and prayers. And as we start the game, we do have some pregame footage, some interviews that we're going to go ahead and roll towards. And if you can't hear us, we'll work out the kinks as we go because we have about 10 minutes till game time. So here we go. And this is Jeremy Fultz with the Seminole Sports Network. I'm here with Coach Hatley for Varnum, Oklahoma, the Varnum Lady Whippets. Coach, welcome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys coming. Appreciate you being here today. So you have an important matchup with Sasakwa Lady Vikings coming up. Tell us a little bit about that matchup. You know, they're, they're always a tough matchup for us. They've, they've got good athletes. Um, they, you know, the coaching staff does a good job there, and they're always ready to play against us. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's never an easy one for us by any means, and, and I know that they'll come ready to play tomorrow, and, and we need to be ready also. So we're almost at the end of the season this year. Tell us a bit, little bit about some of the challenges you've had this year so far. Uh, you know, we've had a couple of injuries, a couple of key ones, you know, and, and then we've had some getting back from injury. Um, you know, that's been something that's kind of plagued us this season. Uh, we've had some nagging things here and there. We've had some sickness here and there, you know, things that kind of, you know, I know a lot of people kind of go through some of those things. A lot of teams go through those things, but, but we have, and we've persevered through them. We've, you know, we've done our best to, to manage it as it comes, and, and uh, you know, the girls have just, just showed a lot of resiliency and, and, and a lot of um, determination in, in, in keeping on going and keeping on being successful. So with tomorrow's matchup, what are some of the keys to the game? You know, for, for starters, we, we have to be ready to play from the get-go. Uh, you know, they, like, like I said earlier, they, they will be ready. We know they will be. Um, it's, always a, it's always a great game, always a great matchup for us. Um, you know, we, um, we have to defend. We have to rebound. Um, you know, we, we have the things that I always tell our girls, the things that make us good on a daily basis don't change opponent to opponent. And, and so we need, to, we need to be good at what we do. We need to play at a high level and, and uh, you know, and, and just try to, Try to do everything we can to win this game tomorrow night. And so at the Little River Conference Tournament, you actually faced the Sakwa, and I heard it went to three overtimes that game. It'll be a tough matchup, so definitely good luck moving Thank forward. And now going forward to districts, that's coming up here pretty soon. we got some rankings coming out later today, and we'll probably post that during the game itself because then we'll know what the final rankings look like. What are some of the things that you're telling your, your girls right now about getting ready for the district playoffs? And not, not that you're looking forward, but what are some of the things that you're doing to prepare them? You know, as, as we go through the season, I, we always, or some of our messages that we preach is we want to be better um, tomorrow than we are today. Um, you know, we want to be a better team in, in February than we are in January. And that's, that's, you know, as we move closer to the playoffs, that's important. Uh, week by week, day by day, um, you know, game by game, we, we want to try to be playing our best ball as we, as we approach the playoffs and, and uh, you know, what they call peak out at the right time and, and just, uh, just bring our absolute best as we go down the stretch of the season. Well, Coach, I hope we're doing this again at the end of February at the Big House, and good luck to you. Thank you guys very much. All I right. appreciate it. This is Jeremy again with the Seminole Sports Network. I have Varnum Lady Whippet guard, Mindy Wildcat. Mindy, welcome. Hi. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what uh, position you play, what year you are. Um, class of 2023, and I'm a point guard for the Varnum Lady Whippets. So for some of us that can't do math, sophomore, junior, senior? Senior. <laughs> oh, okay, you said 2023. That's this year, huh? Okay. <laughs> so tell us so far what kind of year you guys are having. Um, we're ranked number four in 19 and two, so I say we're having a pretty good year. And so what, what are some of the good things that's happened with your team? What, like, what do you uh, say your successes have been? 
Uh, definitely on the offensive side. We do pretty good on that part. Um, past couple of games, our defensive hasn't been really good, but tomorrow we should be better. And so you mentioned tomorrow you got a big district matchup with the Sosakwa Lady Vikings. Tell us a little bit about what you guys are going to have to do as a team to, to make a good run. Um, we're just going to have to start off the way we normally start off and have good defense and just be prepared for them. So the last time that you guys faced the Lady Vikings was at the Little River Conference Tournament, three overtimes. Tell us a little bit about what you guys plan to do now versus what happened then. Um, just stick to having good defense and just have good offense. All right. So looking forward to tomorrow's game, who are going to be some of the, the big matchups or who are you going to rely on with the Varnum Lady Whippets? Um, Haley Mag definitely. She has to have a good game on her three-point line and in the post. And then Natalie Beaver, we have to have her scoring inside and out as well. And so getting close to district playoffs, not that you're looking forward past the next couple games, but what are some of the things that you guys are going to have to do to, to keep trucking along? Um, just keep taking practice serious and then coming in and doing what we do and taking every game one by one. Good deal. And so we always ask all of our student athletes, any shout outs? Um, no, thank you. <laughs> not even mom? No. Mom knows what's up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Again, that's Mindy Wildcat, Varnum Lady Whippets, Mado. This is Jeremy Fultz again with the Seminole Sports Network with some of the players from the Varnum Lady Whippets. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Jesslyn Works, Natalie Beaver, Haley Mack. And then what position do y'all play? Um, I can play anywhere. Wherever he pits me, I just go there. Any position. Same thing. So apparently the all-stars of the Varnum Whippets. <laughs> what grade y'all in? I'm in, I'm a junior. I'm a junior. I'm a senior. All right, so tell us about some of the challenges that you've had so far as a team or personal. I think we had a bunch of sickness this year because, like, yeah, I missed, like, two times or whatever. And all last week I, like, played sick, like, all four games. I'm still sick, but. Uh, just the sickness going around, like, having people out for, you know, like, every game almost. It just, it, like, brings our game down. Uh, <laughs> the same thing. Sickness. And so moving forward, what are some of the opportunities that you guys got to bring to the game? Because you got an important matchup tomorrow night with the Soccer Lady Vikings. They took y'all to three overtimes in the last tournament, right? So tell us about some of the things that you got to bring to the table tomorrow to win the game. Mm, we really need to communicate on the court and like just read their defense and everything else and offense. And that's about it. Have a good mindset coming into the game, working on, you know, just doing what we do, uh, try to do better. Mm, free throws, because that's, yeah, free throws. Yeah. I, I was watching practice, and I noticed that some of you guys were missing free throws. What, what's the <laughs> coach's response to y'all missing free throws? We only have to run if we, like, how many we miss. I don't know. And so we usually give the student athletes one opportunity to give shout outs to anyone they want to. Shout out time. To my mom and dad. To my family back at home watching me. That's a lot of them, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to my mom, my grandma, my grandpa, my auntie. That's it. You didn't miss anyone? Huh? You didn't miss anybody? <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> All right. Again, Varnum Lady Whippets tomorrow night, Sasakwa, right here at Varnum, Oklahoma. See you there.
Happy birthday. Remember I used to work with these guys? Mother. <laughs> If you would, please stand and remove your hats for the National Anthem. As we all know, it's a very special night tonight here at Barnum School. I'd like to first start by thanking everyone for coming out. Uh, thank the Sasako fans for coming out. Thank you to those for supporting the cause tonight. Thank you to the ball teams. Um, thank you for the Barnum community, um, you know, for, for, for honoring and supporting and said always being here um, for us when we need us. At this time, we're going to do a 12-second moment of silence in honor of Haley. Haley was a former ball player of mine. She wore number 12. And we're going to do a 12-second moment of silence to honor her.
and you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you for the round of applause also. Let's have another one for the family. And one last thing we want to commemorate tonight. Um, we had a young lady that hit a career milestone last night. She passed the 1,000 point uh, mark for a high school player. So I'd like to, I don't think she knows. Uh, I think she lost track. I was keeping track of it silently. But she broke it last night against Oak to Hall. Mindy Wildcat, 1,000 points. <laughs> Sasako Lady Vikings. We have freshman number 13, Addie Odom. Senior number 15, Nora Harcho. And now the starting lineup for the Sasako Lady Vikings, Vikings entering into tonight's game with a record of 15 wins and three losses. Senior number one, Alina. Rainbow. Senior, number 11, L. Odom. Junior, number 23, Emily Palmer. Sophomore, number 24, Michaela Harjo. Senior, number 33, Sydney Hovata. The Sasaka Lady Vikings are coached by Ricky Wolf. And now let's meet the reserves for your Barnum Lady Whippets. Freshman, number three, Raylan G. Senior, number four, Trinity Anderson. Freshman, number 11, Ayana Brown. Sophomore, number 14, Shashi Harjo. Sophomore, number 15, Catherine Morgan. Freshman, number 24, Abby Horton. Freshman, number 22, Gina Lofton. The lady with its manager is J.L. Saseo. And now, let's meet the starting lineup for your Barnum Lady Whippets. The Lady Whippets are in, in for tonight's contest with a record of 20 wins and 3 losses. Senior, 5 foot 7, number 23. Mindy Wildcat. Sophomore. Five foot number 21, Megan Wildcat. Five foot seven senior number 32, Jessalyn Works. Five foot nine junior number 14, Haley Mack. And five foot nine junior number 35, Natalie Beaver. The Barnum Lady Whippets are coached by John Mark Hadley and tonight in place of Kyle Richter, assisted by Tyler Miller. All right, we're here at Varnum, Oklahoma for a showdown between the Sasaqua Lady Vikings and the Varnum Lady Whippets. Special night here in Varnum. It's a makeup game, but more importantly, both teams coming out in a purple T-shirt. A lot of the crowd wearing purple tonight in honor of Haley Self. Uh, big loss to the community. And uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to Zach and the Self and Harjo family. 
12 seconds of silence tonight. 12 seconds of silence tonight, uh, basically, because that was the number that Haley wore when she was in high school. And so a great uh, memorial for Coach Hadley to do 12 seconds. But here we go for a tip-off with uh, Emily Paul or Palmer. Or no, that's uh, L. Odom and Wildcat. Tip off. The Soccer Lady Vikings come up with the possession. Turnover. Varden pushes up the Wildcat. Wildcat going to the, the hole. Scores early. Quick bucket. That was a quick bucket by Wildcat. They gave her an award pregame because she scored 1,000 points for her career. That's a big step. Palmer down low, loses the ball, goes out of bounds. Ball's going to stay with Sasakwa. We got a foul on Wildcat, I believe. First team foul. Inbound wrangle. Shot up, no good, but rebounds to Sakwa, puts it up, and is fouled. Looks like she's going to be on the floor, Delaney. Yeah, it's fouled by the little sister, Wildcat, number 21. I think it's Megan. Yeah, Megan Wildcat, number 21. Palmer taking the ball out. Oh, good pass. Play up. Easy two for Sasakwa. Ties the game. Wildcat bringing the ball, passes to the left corner to number 32. Works. Ball back up to the top. Wildcat to the right to Beaver. Beaver looking, doing work, driving down to the baseline, pulls it out. Looking down low to 41, Haley Mack, and it's good. Good hustle play by number 35, Natalie Beaver. Are they coming Better out of the 2 2 press? Is that what they're coming out in? Get that. No. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, 2 2. Full court press. Wildcat with the shot. And it's good. Oh, off the bank. The sis from the sister, too. Yep. Megan Wildcat. Palmer bringing the ball up. Looking for number 11, L. Odom. Turns the ball over. Put Varna pushing the pace tonight. Works gets the ball, but is fouled by number one, Alina Rangel. Beaver up top with the ball. Natalie Beaver up at the top, driving down, kicks out the Mac for three, no good. Sasako pushing the pace to the front. PG1 with the shot. Three, it's good. Six to five. She scored a thousand earlier this year, didn't she, Delaney? Yeah, we have two pretty good scores on each team yep. here. Turnover by Lady Whippets. Sasaka pushing the ball. This is Palmer, I believe. Yep, Palmer driving the ball. No good. Tough shot. Beaver with the rebound. Beaver going down low, kicks out the mat. Jessalyn works on top of the key with the ball, looking for an open player. We have two seniors guarding each other here, going at it. Good matchup tonight, Delaney. Oh, yeah, that's what everybody's here to see, I believe. There it is. A good rebound to Sakwa, pushing it. Emily Palmer gets oh. fouled and the shot, and, and it's well. good. Called a foul on Justin Works. This is Palmer with the and one. Again, February 4th, Saturday night, and we're here in Varnum, Oklahoma. Pretty good place to be. Yeah. It is yeah. on a Saturday yeah. watching the Sasakwa Lady Vikings come to town playing Varnum Lady Whippets. She knocks it down, makes the score eight to six. Sasaka with the literally lead with 450 left in this first period. 
And again, a great matchup. One versus one. Wildcat versus Wrangle. Wildcat the Wildcat, in it? Yeah. Jocelyn Works. Works from the Tuccino. Barnum comes back out in that full court press. Wrangle with a deep three. Oh, yeah, it is good. Tuccino. Hold up. These two teams are not a stranger, uh, though. They've played, what, three times this year already? About each year they play each other that many times, so. So if they're ever going to be prepared for a team, this is going to be it. Yeah. They know what each other's strengths and weaknesses are. Matt going down low gets fouled. Gets fouled. Two team fouls on Lady Vikings. So the Seminole Sports Network or Seminole Nation Sports Network cast tonight is going to be me and Delaney calling the game. Our producer, Josiah Jimboy, working the uh, live stream. And then the media director for the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma, Mark Williams, with the camera work tonight. So nice team effort. Wrangle pushing the ball here. Ooh, looked like a double dribble. She gets called for the double. One too many hands touching the ball at the same time. We have a timeout, Lady Whippets. Mujanita Bokichida Hitha Ofikida Takagi Doso. So we're we're calling the game tonight. I just wanted to say that in the language, even though it's been stated. Bokichogi Sogan Hijido. Pretty good crowd out here tonight too. Packed. Packed stadium in Varnum. They're getting ready for playoffs. They start next week, I believe. Yep, next they? week's playoffs. Yep. We hope you enjoy this broadcast from the Seminole Nation Reservation. The Lady Whip is bringing the ball up the court. It's a high scoring game. Yep. If they keep this pace up. Wildcat driving to the hole. Misses, gets her own rebound, kicks out. And it's good. Natalie Beaver. Beaver. Tuccino. Palmer passes to Oldham. Looking down low to number 33, Hullbutter. Palmer gets the ball back at the top key, drives. Flutter, good. Rebound, Varnum. Wildcat pushing the pace. This is the number four, Haley Mack, with a good Mack shot. The jumper. They like to share the ball. That's a good size of a good team. Oh, no pass. Down low. Come on. And one. Stay and that was a heck of a pass down in the corner. I think number 24, Harjo, no look pass. Yeah, it was a good solid pass. The hull brother who put it up and got fouled. Who ties the ball game up at 14 with 239 left in this first period. Looks like Coach Hadley going to the bench early in this game. Yeah, and Works is in foul trouble already. Natalie. Beaver driving down to the lane. Beaver got herself a layup. Looks like a little confusion on the defensive side. Got hard hard to the number 24, Harjo, turns the ball over. Haley Mack pushing the pressure. Dishes to the corner to Natalie Beaver, who puts the ball up. No good. It's a soccer rebound. Natalie Beaver knocks the ball, though, or gets the ball back. Lady with its ball, I believe. Yeah. Mack on. unable to control it down low. But they'll get the ball back. Wildcat inbounding the ball. This is to the corner. Haley Mack with three. No good. We're going to stay down on the Varnum side.
Natalie Beaver, the shot's no good. Sasak with turning the ball over. Sasak, or Sasak with the rebound, though. Looking ahead. Hard with the shot. No good. Wildcat pushing the floor down to the left. Going up for a layup, and it's good. She scores. Tough left-handed layup there. Quick turnover by Palmer. Lady Vikings. Palmer throwing the ball out of bounds, so turnover. The ball will stay on the Varnum side. Natalie Beaver inbounding the ball from the far corner. Wildcat driving. Palmer with some defense. Wildcat inbounding the ball. Beaver with the two, no good. Put up by Haley Mack, and she scores. And one. Brings the score to 20 to 14 in favor of the Varnum Lady Whippets. Misses the back back half of that. And one. Emily Palmer dishes out to the corner to Odom. Odom misses, but rebound by Hullbutter. Out to Palmer to PG1. PG1 has the ball. Bringing it back out to have the offense reset. Some good defense by 21, Megan Wildcat. But the ball is going to stay with the Lady Vikings. Alina Ringo at the top. Just deep three. Oh, that's good. That was a tough shot. That's her third three tonight, Delaney. Three for three. Wildcat walking the ball up. Just for Varnum. Moving the ball around back at the top of the key. Screen set by Beaver. Wildcat working down low. No good. Back to Mack, and she goes up and gets fouled. That's going to be two shots. Mack stays active on the offensive board. Get another chance for the Lady Whippets. Foul on number 11, L. Odom. Mack shooting two. First one, no good. 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Second shot up, and it's good. Nothing but net. L. Odom bringing the ball up for the Lady Vikings. The number 23, Palmer. Palmer going to the right side. Deflection out of bounds by Wildcat. Put a little too much on that dribble pass. Got 10 seconds left. Changing up the defense here. Oh. Block, looking up to Haley Mack. Wide open for a layup, and it's good. Right before the end of the first. And right here at Varnum, Oklahoma. Varnum has a six-point lead, 23-17 to 17 over the Lady Vikings. Let's go to an interview that we got earlier this week from the Varnum Lady Rippets. Head coach John Hadley. And this is Jeremy Fultz with the Seminole Sports Network. I'm here with Coach Hatley for Varnum, Oklahoma, the Varnum Lady Whippets. Coach, welcome. Thank you, guys. I uh, appreciate you guys coming. Appreciate you being here today. So you have an important matchup with Sasakwa Lady Vikings coming up. Tell us a little bit about that matchup. You know, they're they're always a tough matchup for us. They've, they've got good athletes. Um, they, you know, the coaching staff does a good job there, and they're always ready to play against us. Um, you know, it's 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 never an easy one for us by any means, and, and I know that they'll come ready to play tomorrow, and, and we need to be ready also. So we're almost at the end of the season this year. Tell us a bit, little bit about some of the challenges you've had this year so far. Uh, you know, we've had a couple of injuries, a couple of key ones, you know, and, and then we've had some getting back from injury. Um, you know, that's been something that's kind of plagued us. Okay? All right. Hey, uh, Hadan, Aleji Jahandos. And we're back here in Varnum, Oklahoma, started the second period. 
Varnum Lady Whippets, 23. Sasaqua Lady Vikings, 17. Wildcat walking the ball up to the side of the court. Driving to the right. Driving to baseline. Kicks out the Wildcat. The younger Wildcat passing down low. The Beaver unable to get it down there. Turnover. Wildcat knocking the pass out of bounds, but the balls are going to stay with the Sasaqua Lady Vikings. Palmer inbounding the ball. PG1 driving to the left. Number 24 with the shot. Harjo, no good. Palmer with the rebound, puts it up, and is fouled going up. Going to the line to shoot two. She's a tough matchup for anybody in the, in the state of Oklahoma, I believe. Crashing the boards. Emily Palmer at the line to shoot two. First one's good. Second one's good. Wildcat walking the ball up. Passes to Wild or passes to Lofton. Emily Palmer with the pick. Good layup for Palmer. Sasaki yep. with the defensive foul. That's two on her. That's you don't want her to get up and pick another one up. Jenna Lofton coming out of the game. I think I called her Wildcat a couple times. There's only two Wildcats on the team, I believe. Kicking out the Natalie Beaver. Kicks it. They're swinging it around. Jesslyn works with the ball. Looking down low to Beaver. Well, Megan Wildcat driving to the bucket. The floater. G with the kick out. The works for three. And it's good. <laughs> Jesslyn works with a good three-pointer from the... Her second one, isn't it? Yep. Big shot by the senior. Lina Ringo bringing the ball up for the Lady Vikings. Looking to the right. Shot from the free throw line. No good, but offensive rebound by 33. Beaver with the big rebound. Kicking it to Wildcat. Wildcat. Nope. Turns, Turns it over. Ringo spots up from the free throw line to shoot. No good. Varnum pushing the ball back the other way. High pace tonight, Delaney. Oh, yeah. That's, makes for a good game. And that causes a turnover. Nope. Natalie Beaver gave up on that ball, and the line of Ringo about ran it down. She's quick. Number one for the Sasaqua Lady Vikings. They call her PG1. Senior point guard. Senior point guard, a thousand point scorer. Looking down the hole, how about it? But no good. Turnovers, two turnovers, back to back. Each two. Odom to Palmer, Palmer from the corner, driving down low. Loses control of the ball, but they find Odom oh. down low. He tries to get the hole by the that loses control of the ball. She was too open, I believe. Turned it over. It's when those eyes get real big when you see someone not that open. She's only two feet away from her, too, I think. <laughs> Varnum walking the ball back up with a five-point lead. The score, Varnum 26, Sasaka 21. Jessalyn works with the ball right now. On the, working the ball to the top of the key. Wildcat the Wildcat. <laughs> I'm sure they've been doing that for a few Oh, years. yeah. Probably at home. In the backyard. 
Palmer bringing the ball up for the Lady Vikings. The hall by the Harjo with the three, left it short. Beaver with the rebound. Jesslyn works with the oh. shot from the baseline, no good. Paul Butter not able to handle the ball. Turns it over to Varnum. Works in the corner. No good this time. Paul, or Odom with the rebound. Turns it over. Wild Paul driving to the lane. No good. Palmer with the rebound. Got two on one here. Another turnover. Harjo loses the ball. Goes out of bounds. And we got Haley Mack returning to the basketball game here for Wildcat. Give her a little breather. Megan Wildcat walking the ball up. Nat Beaver controlling the pace here. Kicking it to Matt. Works from the corner. Left it short. Works good that loose ball. Mack with the offensive rebound. Beaver gets goes up. Uh, that was about four offensive foul or rebounds there. I think that's going to be the uh, the deciding factor of this ball game. It's a major difference there. Yeah. Yeah. Natalie Beaver going to the line to shoot two. They're leaving a lot of points out there yeah. with free throws. That first one went up and it's no good. Knocks down the second one, though. Timeout, Lady Vikings. Varnum with a nine-point lead with 3.20 left in this first half. Folks, just a reminder that 50-50 point going on in the four-year. One dollar for tickets. So it's going to be going on all the way through halftime at the boys' game. So what's your thoughts of the game so far, Delaney? High intensity, but with with high intensity, sometimes comes turnovers, and that's kind of what's happening for the Lady Vikings here. You can tell. You can tell both teams are pretty pretty used to seeing each other. They're pretty familiar with each other out there. Yeah. But with that being said, it's twenty nine to twenty one. Still a good game. Yep. Lady Vikings bring the ball up. Alina Ringel with the ball looking to the right. No good. Gets the ball to Harjo. Harjo driving to the right side of the lane. Gets fouled by Beaver. Going back to the line for two. That's her first foul. That's a 16th foul, though. Both, both schools with 16 fouls at this point. She knocks down the first one. This is Harjo. Harjo, yep, no. number 24, Mikayla Harjo. Uh, misses the second one. Beaver brings the ball up. Beaver looking to the right, gets G. Works bringing the ball back to the top of the key, driving down the left side of the lane, puts it up. No good. Rebound, Lady Vikings, who deep outlet pass to Harjo. Harjo going to the lane. Gets fouled by G. Hochifka knocked it. Nugget. Hochifka knocked G, I think. Raylan G, number three. Oh, okay. Wasn't familiar with her. Harjo with the first shot, and it's good. <laughs> Second shot up, no good. Rebound. Mack over to Beaver. Beaver bringing the ball up. Dishes the ball out. The works Earth for three, and it's good. good. Three for six from the three-point line. Elena Ringo bringing the ball up for the Lady Vikings. Going to the left side. Drive to the hoop. 
She Ooh. scores two. She's hard to stay in front of. She's quick and has got a quick shot. Beaver bringing the ball up to the top of the key. Looking down low to Mack. Unable to control the pass. Turnover. Lady Vikings step out of bounds with the turnover there. We got a sub for Lady Whippets. Wildcat and Shicey Harjo yeah. coming into the game. G, G and Wildcat coming out of the game. Beaver inbounding the ball in the deep corner on the baseline. Back at the top, the key or the Wildcat looking down low to Mack and able to convert. Out with the Harjo, the Lady Vikings. Ooh, good pass to put him. The Palmer drives the ball to shoot. Oh, good rebound, Beaver. Beaver hands the ball over to Wildcat, who's bringing the ball up. Timeout, Lady Whippets. With a minute 40 left in this first half. It's been a heck of a ball game so far. We are here in Barnum, Oklahoma on the Saturday night. Just me and Delaney, we're putting in some work. We're doing it all. It's fun, though. Uh, but we do have our producer, Josiah Jimboy, with us. And then also media director of the communications department, Mr. Mark Williams on camera. And so right now the score, Varnum 32, Sasako 25. Here at the special night in Varnum, Oklahoma. Tonight's game is actually a makeup ball game of a makeup ball game. But in honor, if you notice, if you look in the crowd, there's a lot of purple in the stands tonight. And that's because of a special young lady who um, lost her life. And so uh, in memory of Haley, Haley Self, we want to keep the Self and Harjo family in your thoughts and your prayers. And back to this ball game. But with a minute 30 left in this first half, Barnum 32, Sasako 25. Wrangle with a deep three. Deep three works, Work. kind of letting it go from outside oh, today. The green light. Hubba to bring the ball up for the Lady Vikings. Harjo's got the no look passes. I know. She has good vision. That that way. Way. Hey, good dish. The number 33. Yeah. Good hands, good pass. Two points. Five point ball game. Looks like the Lady Whippets may be holding for the last shot here. 30 seconds left. Foul by Harjo, one and one. That's who you want on the free throw line, I think, though. Your senior guard, Mindy Wildcat. Yeah, both teams in the one and one bonus. 29 seconds left in this first half. She knocks it down. She has one more to come here. Knocks them both down. Yep. He step up and get some free points there. Odom inbounding the ball to Palmer. Gets it back to Odom. Coming up this right side of the court. Gives it to Harjo. Harjo down to Odom down low. Unable to convert. Mack with the rebound. This is the Beaver. That's works. Beaver's bringing the ball up now. Beaver driving on the right side, unable to convert. Got two seconds here. You don't want to foul. Harjo with the deep shot. No good, and it's halftime here in Varnum, Oklahoma, where the Varnum Lady Whippets lead the Sasaka Lady Vikings 34-27. to 27. We'll be right back. Enjoy some of these interviews by the uh, Varnum Lady Whippets and the communications staff. 
This is Jeremy Fultz again with the Seminole Sports Network with some of the players from the Varnum Lady Whippets. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Jesslyn Works, Natalie Beaver, Haley Mack. And then what position do y'all play? Um, I can play anywhere. Wherever he pits me, I just go there. Any position. Same thing. So apparently the all-stars of the Varnum Whippets. <laughs> what grade y'all in? I'm in, I'm a junior. I'm a junior. I'm a senior. All right, so tell us about some of the challenges that you've had so far as a team or personal. I think we had a bunch of sickness this year because, like, yeah, I missed, like, two times or whatever. And all last week I, like, played sick, like, all four days. I'm still sick, but. Uh, just the sickness going around, like, having people out for, you know, like, every game almost. It just, it, like, brings our game down. Uh, <laughs> the same thing. Sickness. And so, moving forward, what are some of the opportunities that you guys got to bring to the game? Because you got an important matchup tomorrow night with the Soccer Lady Vikings. They took y'all to three overtimes in the last tournament, right? So tell us about some of the things that you got to bring to the table tomorrow to win the game. Mm, we really need to communicate on the court and like just read their defense and everything else and offense, and that's about it. Have a good mindset coming into the game, working on, you know, just doing what we do, uh, try to do better. Mm, free throws, because that's, yeah, free throws. I, I was watching practice, and I noticed that some of you guys were missing free throws. What, what's the <laughs> coach's response to y'all missing free throws? We only have to run if we like, how many we miss. I don't know. Good deal. And so we usually give the student athletes one opportunity to give shout outs to anyone they want to. Shout out time. To my mom and dad. To my family back at home watching me. That's a lot of them, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> shout out to my mom, my grandma, my grandpa, my auntie. That's it. You didn't miss anyone? Huh? You didn't miss anybody? <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> All right. Again, Varnum Lady Whippets tomorrow night, Sasakwa, right here at Varnum, Oklahoma. See you there. This is Jeremy again with the Seminole Sports Network. I have Varnum Lady Whippet guard, Mindy Wildcat. Mindy, welcome. Hi. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what uh, position you play, what year you are. Um, class of 2023, and I'm a point guard for the Varnum Lady Whippets. So for some of us that can't do math, Sophomore, junior, senior? Senior. Oh, okay, you said 2023. That's this year, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so tell us so far what kind of year you guys are having. Um, we're ranked number four in 19 and 2, so I say we're having a pretty good year. Good deal. And so what, what are some of the good things that's happened with your team? What, like, what do you uh, say your successes have been? Uh, definitely on the offensive side. We do pretty good on that part. Um, past couple games, our defensive hasn't been really good, but tomorrow we should be better. Good deal. And so you mentioned tomorrow you got a big district matchup with the Sosakwa Lady Vikings. Tell us a little bit about what you guys are going to have to do as a team to, to make a good run. Um, we're just going to have to start off the way we normally start off and have good defense and just be prepared for them. So the last time that you guys faced the Lady Vikings was at the Little River Conference Tournament, three overtimes. Tell us a little bit about what you guys plan to do now versus what happened then. Um, just stick to having good defense and just have good offense. So looking forward to tomorrow's game, who are going to be some of the, the big matchups or who are you going to rely on with the Varnum Lady Whippets? Um, Haley Mag definitely, she has to have a good game on her three-point line and in the post. And then Natalie Beaver, we have to have her scoring inside and out as well. And so getting close to district playoffs, not that you're looking forward past the next couple games, but what are some of the things that you guys are going to have to do to, to keep trucking along? Um, just keep taking practice serious and then coming in and doing what we do and taking every game one by one. Good deal. And so we always ask all of our student athletes, any shout outs? Um, no, thank you. <laughs> Not even mom? Uh... Mom knows what's up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Again, that's Mindy Wildcat, Varnum Lady Whippets, Mado.
and this is Jeremy Fultz with the Seminole Sports Network. I'm here with Coach Hatley for Varnum, Oklahoma, the Varnum Lady Whippets. Coach, welcome. Thank you, guys. I uh, appreciate you guys coming. Appreciate you being here today. So you have an important matchup with Sasakwa Lady Vikings coming up. Tell us a little bit about that matchup. You know, they're, they're always a tough matchup for us. They've, they've got good athletes. Um, they, you know, the coaching staff does a good job there, and they're always ready to play against us. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's never an easy one for us by any means, and, and I know that they'll come ready to play tomorrow, and, and we need to be ready also. So we're almost at the end of the season this year. Tell us a bit, little bit about some of the challenges you've had this year so far. Uh, you know, we've had a couple of injuries, a couple of key ones, you know, and, and then we've had some getting back from injury. Um, you know, that's been something that's kind of plagued us this season. Uh, we've had some nagging things here and there. We've had some sickness here and there, you know, things that kind of, you know, I know a lot of people kind of go through some of those things. A lot of teams go through those things, but, but we have, and we've persevered through them. We've, you know, we've done our best to, to manage it as it comes, and, and uh, you know, the girls have just, just showed a lot of resiliency and, and, and a lot of um, determination in, in, in keeping on going and keeping on being successful. So with tomorrow's matchup, what are some of the keys to the game? You know, for, for starters, we, we have to be ready to play from the get-go. Uh, you know, they, like, like I said earlier, they, they will be ready. We know they will be. Um, it's, always a, it's always a great game, always a great matchup for us. Um, you know, we, um, we have to defend. We have to rebound. Um, you know, we, we have the things that I always tell our girls, the things that make us good on a daily basis don't change opponent to opponent. And, and so we need, to, we need to be good at what we do. We need to play at a high level and, and uh, you know, and, and just try to, Try to do everything we can to win this game tomorrow night. And so at the Little River Conference Tournament, you actually faced the Sakwa, and I heard it went to three overtimes that game. It'll be a tough matchup, so definitely good luck moving Thank forward. And now going forward to districts, that's coming up here pretty soon. we got some rankings coming out later today, and we'll probably post that during the game itself because then we'll know what the final rankings look like. What are some of the things that you're telling your, your girls right now about getting ready for the district playoffs? And not, not that you're looking forward, but what are some of the things that you're doing to prepare them? You know, as, as we go through the season, I, we always, or some of our messages that we preach is we want to be better um, tomorrow than we are today. Um, you know, we want to be a better team in, in February than we are in January. And that's, that's, you know, as we move closer to the playoffs, that's important. Uh, week by week, day by day, um, you know, game by game, we, we want to try to be playing our best ball as we, as we approach the playoffs and, and uh, you know, what they call peak out at the right time and, and just, uh, just bring our absolute best as we go down the stretch of the season. Well, Coach, I hope we're doing this again at the end of February at the Big House, and good luck to you. Thank you guys very much. All I right. appreciate it. And we're back here at Varnum, Oklahoma to start the second half of the ball game where the Sasakwa Lady Vikings 
Travel the ball. Oh, put over by the 21. Megan Wildcat taking it to the hole. Passes to her sister. Easy two. Oh, yeah. Rango bringing the ball up for the Vikings and dribbles off her foot, goes out of the bounds. And so early turn, two early turnovers for the Lady Vikings. Mini Wildcat walking the ball up. Passes to Works, who finds Nat Beaver down low. Good pass to Mack. Puts it up. No good. Gets her own rebound, though. Goes up. Hard rebound. Gets it out to Hubbutta. Hubbutta passes up to Odom. Loses control of the ball, but it goes out of bounds off of Arnhem defender. Ball's going to stay with the Lady Vikings. Hubba the driving, passes back out the wrangle. Hubba with another nose dive. She sees the court pretty well. Lady Whippets passing the ball around, looking for that shot. Beaver working down low. And she gets it to fall. Yeah, getting big down there. That's good old old school pass. Screen by Palmer, who releases, working down, down low. Got, Beaver with the foul, though. Yeah, reaching in. What is that, two on her? Yep, yep two on Beaver. That's obviously going to be on the floor, so Palmer inbounding the ball on the baseline. Knocked out of bounds by the Varnum Lady Whippets by Wildcat. Ball's going to stay with the Sasakwa Lady Vikings. Looking down low. Dish back out to PG1. Who puts it up? No good. Rock out the rebound. Who's big pass forward to little sister. Big sister to little sister this time. It's a little different. I was getting tongue tied. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I think As a she turnout, sees someone open down this Sasakwa. <laughs> Wildcat bringing up the ball. Works driving to the top of the key, right. pulling the ball back out. Taking their time here. Works passes to Wildcat, who finds Beaver down in the post, working it, works. kicking out the works. For a corner three, no good. Rebound, Lady Vikings. Beaver putting some pressure on the ball. Odom to Harjo. Harjo, one too many no looks on that one. They're cool when they work, but when they go. Wildcat to Wildcat. Mindy walking the ball up. Lady Whippets in control of this game right now. Oh, good law pass from Jesslyn. Oh. Missed layup by Matt. Yep. Matt seems like just been a little bit off a little bit yep. down low. Those are usually easy, guaranteed two points. But Barnum coming off of a game last night in Oktaha. That's true. They beat. They took down 2A, number three. Turnover, so Vardum's going to inbound the ball, Matt. The Wildcat. Walking the ball up. Pace slowed down a little bit this yeah. second half, but. Works with the ball. Another long pass down low. Oh. Harjo gets fouled going in. Arjo going to the line. Oh. 
Two free throws for Harjo coming up here. Talking about this crowd tonight, Delaney. There is a lot of people here. I see a lot of cousins here. <laughs> Look down low. Works was all down below or behind, or below the basket, all by herself. Working the ball, not able to convert on that, but Mack with the rebound. rebound. She got that one to fall. Yep. Palmer dishes out to Odom, who shoots a three. No good. Palmer with the rebound. Allie Ringle Jump goes ball. up. Jump ball. Delaney, you know, I know the score is 12 points, but this is two real good ball teams playing against each other tonight. That could change in a few minutes. Yeah. Here. That's how good both teams Looking are. Just like that, Rangel getting the ball from Beaver gets fouled. So just like that. Two free throws coming yep. up. That's three on Beaver, I believe. She's a vital part to this Lady Whippets team. So they'll be in trouble if she has yeah. to sit down. And PG1 going to the free throw line for two. The first one's good. She just snuck in there and got that ball. <laughs> Again, 1,000-point scorer. She earned her 1,000-point badge at the beginning of the season. I'm sure she has over 1,200 now at this point. 10-point game. I mean, her and LeBron getting ready to break scoring records, right? Good pass from Wildcat to Beaver. Easy layup. Palmer bringing the ball up. Getting double teamed, but dribbles around it. Takes it all the way in. No good. Rebound, Mac. Beaver with the long pass. The work. Pass it up. That's good. That's how you're on the floor. Varnum Lady Whippets with the 14 point lead, 46 to 32. Palmer with the three. No good. Rebound, Beaver. Beaver with another long pass. The Works, who pulls it back out. Beaver, top of the key, looking back to Works. Oh, and it's. She's not scared. Oh, two chicken. <laughs> <laughs> she is not scared to shoot that three tonight, Delaney. You want a confident shooter, though. Yeah. You don't want somebody that's timid. You know, she, she's, she's probably had a pretty big turnaround since we first started watching her play a couple years ago. Yeah. It's her senior year. Oh, she has to we go got out. a camera on this right oh. now, I think. No, okay. Not, but not time out. 49-32, Lady Whippets. Yep. Lady Whippets starting to pull away a little bit here. It is. If you're here in Varnum, America, Varnum, Oklahoma, they are, ha or they are having a 50-50 tonight. This is the first place I heard them actually have to give instructions on how to do a 50-50. Usually, they, you know, people just say 50-50 and they know what you're talking about. But, but for a good cause. <laughs> 17 point lead for the Varnum Lady Whippets. District play starting next Thursday, next I believe. Next Thursday here. <laughs> Long pass to Works, who finds a driving Mac, takes it in for a two. They're not letting off the gas here. Long layup for Palmer. Do you call that a layup, Delaney? Or do you call that a flying hook? Like a look like Kareem out there. <laughs> Beaver looking down low to Mac. Works Gets in the corner. Works. Two 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 good. That's five, I believe. She's about five for ten. That's fifty percent. You don't see that often. Yeah, she's shooting lights out tonight. Palmer driving, just a little hard on the pass. Lady Whippets ball. A 
Wildcat with the long pass to Beaver. Breaking this press of the Sasakwa Lady Vikings. Wildcat getting the ball up at the top of the key. Passes to her younger sister, Wildcat. The works. Works with the ball. Taking their time now, Delaney. Yep, slowing it down. Controlling the pace. Getting down the mat. It gets tied up. One ball. That stays here for the Lady Whippets. Wildcat taking the ball out here. Let's see what play they have set up. Beaver gets fouled and is going to the free throw line for two. Beaver with two. First one's coming up here. She knocks the first one down. Making the score 55-34. The second one's coming up. Knocks both down. Big difference in each half here with free throws. Palmer bringing the ball up for Lady Vikings. Palmer with the tough shot. Twenty point lead for Lady Whippets. Morgan, first game of the season. Another tough shot by Palmer here. Beaver bringing the ball up here. Playing five out. Trying to wait for a breakdown by the Lady Vikings to get an easy bucket. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Varnum holding the ball. Like me and Delaney has been saying, playoffs are coming around the corner. And I've been quiet because I was kind of looking up the district pairings. You got to fine tune your skills. This is the time to do it this time of the year. Works with the three. Two Tina. Just That's like Coach drew it up, I believe. <laughs> Six threes left. Palmer going up for a shot. No good. Works with six threes in the ball game, I believe. And that's in three quarters. And so next week, looks like Varnum is hosting their district play. Mm -hmm. And Agra, Butner, and New Lima is all in that district, right? Yeah. And then for Sasakwa, they're going to be traveling to Macomb where they'll be playing and seeing Mason and Wilson from Henrietta. I think they call it Wilson Henrietta. Wilson Henrietta, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Henrietta. It's not just Henrietta. Henrietta. I'm not from that area Henrietta, like you, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how y'all say it down there. Well, at the end of the third period, the Varnum Lady Whippets leading the Sasakwa Lady Vikings 59-38, to 38, having a great time here in Varnum, Oklahoma. It's been a long day so far, Delaney. The junior high kicked it off about what four, about four o'clock. Yep. The girls' game went to like overtime. We got to watch that while they were all uh, while we were trying to set up. All right, fourth quarter, LA GG Dose. Well, they start the quarter off with a turnover. That's not what you want to do. Twenty-one point lead for the Varnum Lady Whippets. Wildcat calling out the play. Wildcat down the Beaver. 
Give and go from the block. Works with the ball. Long pass to Morgan. Morgan the Wildcat. Morgan working down low. She's coming back from an injury, so you can see it. She don't want to move on that knee. Morgan, just a sophomore. Catherine Morgan. Catherine Morgan. She was a starter last year, I believe. Turnover, Lady Vikings, Wildcat, pushing the ball. Is it, oh. Morgan dishes out. The Wildcat. Hall brother with the rebound. Outlets to Palmer. Takes it to the hole. Palmer with a acrobatic layup. Turnover. PG1 with the ball. No good on the left-handed layup, but Palmer there for the rebound. No good. Offensive rebound. No good, but gets hacked going up. It's going to be Lady, two shots. Lady Vikings turn up the intensity here in the fourth quarter. If they want a chance at coming back here. Down in front. Down in front. <laughs> One for two for the Lady Vikings there. Wildcat the works. Back to Wildcat. Back to works. Another two. two. A seven. Seven threes for works, I believe. She's having a night. She is. Two free throws for Palmer for Lady Vikings. We're saying hi to our man up in the in the booth tonight. Mr. Mark Williams holding it down on the camera. I thought Works was going to pull it up again. Can't be mad at it. Oh, good oh. cut by Beaver. Unable to convert. Palmer to Hellbutta. Hellbutta looking for someone open. Finds Beaver. Harjo driving. No good. Palmer with the rebound. Out to Odom. Odom with the long shot. No good. Rebound Works. Wildcat finds Wildcat down low, but picked off. Oh. Turnover. Yep. Palmer driving to the hole on Beaver one on one and scores. Strong finish by Palmer. Barnum. Wildcat turn the baseline. Barnum with a quick pitch in pass. Easy layup after they gave up a bucket. Timeout by Coach John Mark Hadley. And we're here in Varnum, Oklahoma. Thanks for joining us tonight here on the Seminole Nation Sports Network. I'm Jeremy Fultz, along with our co-host. Usually every Tuesday you might hear us. The last couple of weeks, though, it hasn't been that way due to the weather. And that's why we're here in Varnum, Oklahoma on the Saturday, because the last two weeks this game has been rescheduled. This game was supposed to take place a couple of weeks ago. I believe so, yeah. But now we find ourselves here on the Saturday night, night. Saturday night. I'd rather be here than anywhere else. I agree. Watching some good basketball, seeing a lot of people you know. It's just like a big old family gathering over here. But this is Res Ball right here on the Res. Seminole Nation Res Ball. Yep. 
there's movies about this that's <laughs> happening right here. And so we hope you're enjoying enjoying the broadcast tonight. Again, you can catch us every Tuesday for Seminole Nation Radio Show. Tuesday at 11 on KWSH, 97.7 FM and 12.60 AM. Five minutes left in the game here. Varnum Lady Whippets up by 19. PG1 with the shot, no good. A lot of skip passes there from Lady Whippets. Good ball of movement. Odom knocking the ball out of bounds. Ball's going to stay with the Lady Whippets. Wildcat inbounding their sister Wildcat. No good. Palmer with the rebound. Palmer driving. Down low to Odom. Back up to Holbutta. DeHarjo, another no-look pass. No good. Haley Mack Mac bringing the ball. Wildcat with the follow-up layup. Wrangle with the layup at the other end. Skip past the works. Two Tina! I believe that's eight if I can count right. Since we started counting, that's eight. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, somebody else saying We need to find out how many for sure because she's having a heck of a night shooting that ball. There it is. Mack with the, from the corner. To Tina! <laughs> Nothing but net. You could hear it from here. Yeah. Hold butter with the easy bucket. Barnum slowing down the pace of this game. Started the entire second half pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mack with another Mack. two cheating. Oh, we should left it long. Wildcat with follow up. Works with another three, and shoot, another one. Is that nine? Yeah, that's works. Oh, was it a two? Yeah. Are you keeping track of three? We got confirmation that she's had at least seven threes in that one corner. <laughs> Two minutes left in this ball game. The Varnum Lady Whippets kind of pulling away, Delaney. Yep. 77 to 50. We're going to get... Palmer knocks down the free throws. Beaver gets fouled. It's only the second team foul for the Lady Vikings. And we did get a, and we did get a stat update. 
Jocelyn works 10 three pointers in tonight's game. I've never seen that done, I don't think, in person. Man, that, I've never seen that. That's that's incredible. This is great shot. It was just We have some subs on the floor for Lady Whippets. Morgan Brown. This is the third. Horton. Horton with the three. Horton. Oh, left it short. They're leaving works in there. I mean, she's having a career night. There's got to be a record here somewhere. I think Minute that's 40 left in this game. Works with the ball. Brown. Looking to Morgan. Morgan with the ball. To Horton. To Works. Works driving. With another layup. She has about 36 points. Harjo with the three. No good, but Rangel with the rebound. No good. Works just everywhere without defensive Doing it rebound. All. That's your senior guard. Shooting guard. Wildcat. To Brown. Horton, to Brown. Driving for a shot. And it's yeah, she gets two points. Ayon and Brown, two points. Yeah. I'm sure her dad, Fred, is pretty happy right yeah, now. Yeah, he's probably got that. We worked with her dad. Yeah, he, he owes her five bucks for that bucket. Yeah. He's over there waving and giggling somewhere. We have a sub here. Senior guard, Justin Works. Senior guard, Mindy Wildcat. Two big games by these seniors. Harjo and Lofton coming into the game. Lofton with the three, left it short. <laughs> 10 seconds left here. Somebody wants to, the crowd wants them to shoot it. Lofton. All right, that's the score. That's it. And that's for you. the ball game. Eighty-one to fifty-one. Varnum Lady Whippets with the win. And that's the score. That's weird. Here at halftime, good time to go and get those fifty-fifty tickets. The pot right now stands. Where'd our producer go? Oh, it's just us. Yeah. Nach Magahanitska. For six hundred dollars, at least in their pocket tonight. Let's pump that on up. They're out there and buy those raffle tickets at all rates. We have a second right. game up here. This should be a good one too. Yep. So, the Varnum Lady Whippets defeating the Sasakwa Lady Vikings, eighty-one to fifty-one. Thirty-point game, but it didn't seem like a thirty-point game, Belinda. Yep. It was the intensity was there. Yeah. Jocelyn, I think, making the big, the big difference in the yeah, game. You got, you got to point her out and give and, her credit. Yeah, at least ten three-point shots. She had a few layups, free throws. She was close to forty points. Oh, Fred Brand was, I think, trying to get my attention. But we do have some stats. <laughs> Sibino Reyes basketball at its finest. An A plus production. Let's go ahead. With eight minutes left in between games, we're going to go ahead and go to some of the interviews we did for the boys. We hope you enjoy it. Go ahead and roll it. This is Jeremy Fultz again with the Seminole Sports Network, back with Coach Hadley. Coach, uh, both the boys and the girls, uh, Varnum Whippets. Coach, welcome back. 
Thank you. A lot of questions again surrounding the boys team. And so tell us a little bit about your season so far and what the record is. The, the boys are sitting at 13 and 8. Uh, we've had, um, we've, this season's kind of had its ups and downs with, with this bunch. Uh, we've, we've played some really good competition. We've let some close ones get away. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're a young team. We're learning every day. We're, we're trying to get better daily. Um, you know, we're trying to jail. We're trying to peak out at the right time. And that's, you know, that, that's our focus daily, just, just to get a little bit better and, and be playing our best basketball as we move into the, towards the playoffs. And so the game with the Sasakwa Vikings, what are some of the keys to victory there, Coach? You know, they're, they're, a, they're an athletic team. They're well coached by Coach Jones. And, um, you know, I know they'll be prepared. I know they'll give a great effort. Um, you know, the last time we played them at the conference tournament, it, the, game was, the game was relatively close for a while. You know, they, they kind of gave us some scares. Uh, you know, they've, they've, they've got some good kids there, and, and, and I'm sure they're better than they were, you know, in December even. So, um, you know, we, we need to be ready to play. And, um, you know, every game is, is its own thing. You know, we may have won that one by – you know, by double digits, but it's a score 0-0 zero, zero when we tip this one off tomorrow night, so we're going to have to go earn it again. Who are some players that we need to watch out for on this uh, on this boys' team? You know, we, we start uh, three sophomores and a freshman, uh, and then we've had a couple of seniors, you know, alternating in, in, in one of those spots. And, um, you know, the, the freshman is, is John Madkins, um, you know, 6'6", six, six and, and full of potential, and, you know, and then – our three sophomores at start, just, you know, any of those at any any given day can have a huge game. And sometimes they do on – two of them do on the same day even, you know, and they complement each other well. Uh, you know, those, those, those older guys for us, they, they provide some defense for us and, and experience. And and uh, they're, they're good kids, though, and they, they come to work, you know, every day, and, and they, they give me their best, and that's 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 what we ask. Good. Coach, we appreciate it. Thanks for letting us interrupt your practice, and good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Madonna. All right, and guy. We're back in Varnum, America, Varnum, Oklahoma, home of the Whippets. Who do I have with me today? Yeah, Quinn Bowlegs with you today. Class of 2023, uh, shooting guard. Big game with the Sasako Vikings. What are some of your keys to victory? Uh, defense is key. Um, try to try to held, uh, held them under 40 points. That's what coach really wants us to uh, have our goal as and we're gonna try to do what we do best good deal So what are some of the challenges or struggles you guys had this year as a team? Um, some of the challenges we had this year is um, We had some illnesses um, some players uh, uh, Do some stuff that we didn't expect them to do during the middle of the school year when we really needed them the most during this tournament but you know, we come together and we're, we're, we're a team, so we got to find some things to do. Good deal. Playoffs aren't that far away. Districts aren't that far away. What are some of your keys to making sure you guys are ready for the playoffs? Uh, we got to stay focused, stay locked in every practice. Play, uh, I mean, practice like it's your last uh, practice you're ever going to be in because you never know what's going to happen when it's time to, uh, for playoff time. And so we usually give our student athletes an opportunity to give a shout out to whoever they want to. Here's your chance, man. Man, I'm a shout out to my Varnum Whippets, man. They've been with me for four years, and we're going to try to do what we do best is go win a state championship. All right, congratulations. Good luck tomorrow night. This is Jeremy Fultz again with the Seminole Sports Network here in Varnum, Oklahoma, home of the Whippets. Tell us who we got. Uh, my name is John Arredondo. I'm a senior. I'm a point guard slash shooting guard. Um, that's it. Oh, okay. So tomorrow night's a big game with the Sasakwa Vikings. Tell us some of your keys to victory. Uh, our keys is just rebounding, boxing out, you know, playing some good defense, getting the offense rolling. Once we get offense rolling and defense, we, I think we'll have a pretty good chance of winning that game. Some of the fundamentals. Yeah. Good deal. And so what are some of the challenges that you guys have had so far this season? Well, one of the big challenges that we faced during this season was um, a bunch of sickness that's been running around. Like my, myself, I've been sick the last couple of games. I missed three games. It wasn't good. It, it just it wasn't that good, yeah. 
All right. And so we usually give our student athletes an opportunity for shout outs. Who would you like to give a shout out to? I want to say a shout out to uh, Coach Hadley for pushing us to our limits and having us, you know, work on our game as best as we can and pushing us. Yeah. All right. Mado, Jeremy Fultz, back to the game. Mado, and this is Jeremy Fultz again with the Seminole Sports Network. I have a Varnum Whippet ready to play the game. Tell us your name, your position, and your grade. Uh, I, I am Kylan Mack. I am a uh, point guard slash uh, shooting guard, and I go to uh, Varnum, and I am a um, class of uh, 2025. I'm a sophomore. Good deal. So big matchup tomorrow night with the Sasako Vikings. Tell us a little bit about your keys to victory. Oh, well, the keys to victory, you know, is just playing as a team. You know, we uh, – we had some struggles, you know, some sickness down the way. And, um, you know, we're just going to play, try to play as one like we always do and uh, try to get this win for uh, Miss uh, Haley Hunter herself, you know, that recently passed away that we, you know, that we have to honor and we're going to have to um, just come out, have fun, and play as a team. And they're calling this Purple Night? Yes. Yes, sir. You want to tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, you know, not really much. It's like a – just like to honor her, you know, we, uh, you know, we was all close to her in some different way of shape or form. And, um, you know, she, she had a big impact about us and, you know, we all want to play as a team, you know, for her so we could have uh, a better outcome of our season. And so tell us about some of the challenges you guys have had this year. All right. The challenges that we had, you know, gosh, it was, um, you know, battling sickness, having two uh, great, great star players uh, fall out short of our team. You know, having a center, having a, you know, a point guard slash shooting, shooting guard like myself, you know, had to be removed from the team from, you know, just from misbehaving stuff. But, uh, you know, um, no, that's all it is, really. But other than that, you know, we're going to we're going to try to overcome the outcomes, make sure not everybody's sick, make sure everybody's healthy and played and you just try to come back and get this win tomorrow. All right, so we usually give all the student athletes that we interview a, a chance to give a shout out to anyone. Who's your shout out? Uh, my shout out is the Mack family, Kevin Mack, you know, Kevin Oba Mack, my mom Ella Mack, and the Varna Whippets. <laughs> Some good ones. Good luck tomorrow night. We'll see you on the court. Thank you. Number three, Tatum Lane. Number ten, Grayson Cody. Number fourteen, Seth Hillman. Number twenty, Christian Esparza. Number twenty-two, Jesus Gutierrez. Number twenty-four. Jensen Luna. Number 35, Elias Walker. And now the starting lineup for the Sasako Vikings. Junior, number two, Waylon Phillips. Freshman, number five, Mason Palmer. Sophomore, number 11, Payson Shaw. Senior, number 13, Sean Franks. And freshman, number 21, AJ Wayne. The soccer Vikings are coached by Chris Jones. So now let's meet the reserves for your Barnum Whippets. 
senior number two, Quinton Moley. Freshman number three, Devin Fulbright. Freshman number four, Benjamin Suarez. Freshman number five, Colt Abbott. Senior number 10, Austin White Richards. Freshman number 12, Trenton Mack. Sophomore number 14, Micah Eversole. Sophomore number 32, Xavier Colapo. Freshman number 33, Christian Brazier. Sophomore, number 34, Adrian B. Hill. Junior, number 35, Anthony Overby. The managers for the Barnard Whippets are Elia Harjo and Anna Karen Correto. And now, Introducing the starting line for their Barnum Whippets coming into the night's game with a record of 15 wins and 8 losses. Starting at guard, 6 foot 3 sophomore, number 24, CJ Bernard. Starting at guard, 5 foot 10 inch sophomore, number 22, Kaylin Mack. Starting at guard, 5'9", senior, number 11, John Aaron Mondo. Starting at forward, 5'11", sophomore, number 21, Ruben Zapata. And starting at center, 6'6", six six freshman, number 42, John Madden. The Barnum Records is coached by John Mark Hadley and assisted tonight by Tyler Miller. Tickets will continue on sale until half time. All right, here we go. I had to take over for Mr. Delaney Pinnock. I guess he just got bored, got got tired, got real tired. <laughs> Talking too much, I guess. But I am Josiah Jimboy, your media specialist at Seminole Nation. They don't want to know that, Joe. Let's get to the game. Here we go. It's the game. <laughs> Phillips with the ball for Sasakwa. Webb driving number 21, Zapata, Zapeta with the foul. Shaw inbounding for the Vikings. Franks. White ball. Ball goes out of bounds, going to stay with the Vikings. Good still. Number 24, Bernard, bringing the ball up for the Whippets. Swinging the ball to the right. Mackins, I remember him, his brother, playing the ball in the state tournament a couple years ago. Zapata with the two. Good finish, good finish. Frank's bringing the ball up, getting it to Phillips. Mack on Phillips. Webb to Shaw, Shaw driving, picked the ball up, back to Webb. Franks with the Franks, ball. driving down low, ball blocked, but he gets his own rebound, dishes it back out to Phillips. 
Mack playing some killer defense on Phillips. Knocked the ball out of bounds. The ball's going to s- Looks like go to the Varden. Oh, no, timeout. Okay. Already this early. Early timeout in this ball game. Coach uh, Jones getting his boys together. So, Joe, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're kind of new on the broadcast. Oh, 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 I thought they want to hear about the game. I thought they want to hear about the game. Now, now he wants me to introduce myself. <laughs> So you really just didn't say nothing about yourself at all? No, nope, I already said it. I said, I said enough about myself. Uh, all right, well, the Vikings are getting ready to inbound the ball. Phillips, the Franks. Franks runs this, uh, the point guard for the Vikings. Down low in the Palmer. You heard that name Palmer a lot in the first, first game. You'll probably hear it a lot in this second game. Oh, good hustle, good hustle. Good hustle by both teams. Frank's driving, dishes the ball, but he gets fouled. It's going to be on the floor. Number 21, Webb getting ready to inbound for the Vikings. Overthrows, Palmer. Turnover. Good take. Good Bernard. finish. Good finish, good defense. Frank driving down the lane. Puts it up. No good. Mackins with the rebound. Circus shot by Franks, man. To Zabata, back to Mack. Mack shoots the 10-footer. And a good. Rose nice in. mid-range. Nice mid-range. Frank's bringing up the ball. Pass the Palmer in the oh. corner. Throws it away. That pass. Sasakwa already early with the turnovers. Matt goes up for the layup, and it's good. Sasakwa with another timeout. And why are they calling that timeout, Joe? He's going on a run, going on a run. Barnum's going on a run. Yeah, 8-0 run right now at the beginning of the first. Sasakwa finds themselves with not a point. Yet in this ball game. And so, again, we're here. If you're just now joining us in Varnum, Oklahoma, on a special Saturday night, Saturday night basketball game here on the Seminole Nation Reservation. Joe, this game was rescheduled twice. Yeah. I'm waiting a couple weeks for this game. I'm waiting a couple weeks. Yeah. The ice just melted a couple days ago. Matter of fact, we got to our office yesterday, and it was still pretty bad over there. Yeah, 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 it was. I was ice skating into my into the office. I skated from my car to the office. I sat in my car until the, the guys were able to get some salt on the <laughs> ice. All right, Phillips inbounding the ball to Frank. Frank walking it up for the Vikings. Phillips with the two, or with the deep three, no good. Number 24, Bernard. Throws it up. Pausing the action real quick. Barnum inbounding the ball. The big Mackins unable to get the ball, bring it down to the hole. But gets fouled on the way up. Yep, yep, yep. So Mackin's going to the line. What are you doing? Keely. Do you remember his brother a couple years ago? Oh, Joe, you wasn't with us, was you? I don't know, but Delaney's right here. We can ask him. Terrence Mackin's, yep, right? sure do. His little brother. I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say little brother. Little brother's always bigger than the big brother. <laughs> Frank's bringing the ball up for the Vikings. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. 
Frank's driving, and it's good. Good layup. Good take by Frank's. That breaks the scoreless drought of the Vikings so far. Mack with the ball. Bernard in the corner driving. Gets fouled going up. By, was that Shaw? So Bernard going to the line to shoot two. <laughs> Two shots. Makes the first one. Makes the first one. Did you go get your raffle yet? Your 50 50? You ready to get one? Yeah, me and Delaney already went over there. We're winning, though. <laughs> Deep three. Ooh. Oh, and it's good. That's number 21, Webb. Mack bringing up the ball for the Whippets. Finds Bernard on the. You're strong with it. Mackin's looking down low, unable to find anything. Turns over the ball. Sasakwa driving. Finds Franks in the corner for three. No good. Another one. And just as quickly as it was 8-0, the game is now two-point deficit. Varnum leading by two. two with 352 left in this first period. Two big threes, two big threes. Arndondo with the ball, working down that high post. The Bernard, Bernard shoots it, no good. Mack with the rebound. Finds Arndondo at the top of the key for three, and it's good. Zapata. Zapata, Zapata. Zapata. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Charge! <laughs> I'm getting corrected here on the Varnum sideline. It's a pot of the Mac. Mac with the ball driving baseline. Low up. It's good. Good baseline attack. Franks with the ball now, driving back up for the Vikings. Oh, back pass, back pass. Sasako with the turnovers. Turnover. That's what got Varnum that big lead. How big is that lead, Joe? Well, before it was, what, 8 0? Not me now. What's the lead now? Oh, 7 7, my bad. Phillips with the steal. Easy layup for Phillips. Bernard to Zapata. Down low to Mackins. Put the ball in. Hey. Mountain the house. Moves up there, Joe. Uh -huh. Frank to Phillips. How's he going? Oh. Well, with the ball. Oh. Rims out. Zapata with the rebound. Uh, heat check, heat check. Mack with the ball. Drive and lose possession of the ball, so turnover. Ball in favor of the Vikings. Webb to Frank. Frank driving down the lane. And one. The score gets the foul. Zapata to take that charge, but he was too deep. He's a potter. There you go. There you go. Now you're getting the names. So Frank going to the line for the and one. And it's good. With 145 left in this first period. Varnum's up by four points. 17 to 13. Mack walking the ball up. Yeah. 
Good entry that pass. Good entry pass. Number 11, Arandondo coming to the bench. Got a black eye last night against Oktaha, he said. <laughs> Wearing that badge, pretty proud. Checking in for him is Quinn Bowlegs. Matt Number going two. to the ground, and Phillips going to the ground for a jump ball. Number 12, Trenton Matt. Delaney. Number 12, Trenton Matt. Come on, Q. I don't know his first name. Come on, Q. Come on, Q. Mack loses possession of the ball. Phillips driving to the lane, uncontested. Minute left in this first period. Varnum's up by five. Turnovers. Turnovers. Tyler Mack walking this ball up. What's been the biggest difference in this ball game, Joe? I'm going to say it again. Turnovers. <laughs> Good follow. Oh. Mack with the floater, no good. It was a good follow, though. <laughs> Turnover. Ball's going to go to the Vikings. Varnum out in this full court press. Oh. Palmer with the three, no good. Rebound, Mack. Mack pushing the pace. Mac driving, loses control of the Ooh, ball. Carry, it's carry. going to be a carry. Can't do that in basketball, can you? No, you cannot. <laughs> Phillip driving down the hole, gets fouled. Foul on number 20 or 42. Big. Mackins. Oh, look at that. Oh, he doubled. He doubled. <laughs> Joe, you seem to be pretty hey, familiar listen, with listen. the double dribble. Listen, listen. You must get called for that a lot. No. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Mac passing the ball to Bernard. Bernard walking it up across half court. Bernard working on number 13, Frank. Oh, green light. And it's a deep three. Green light. Buzzer, that's the end of the first period. Revardum is up 23-16. to 16. What's your thoughts, Joe? It's been a tough one for Sasako, I'll tell you that. Turnover's been the key so far. Sasako. Sasako with some key turnovers. Making for some easy points for the Whippets. It's a game of runs. It's a game of runs. They just said that 50 50 is up to 1200. What? I'm about to go get me one now. <laughs> I might need to go put an extra 20 in there. Sasaka was going to control the ball at the beginning of the second period. And here we go. Frank's passing over the shot or the web. Frank driving down the right side of the lane. Good take. Good take. Good take. Tough finish.
Mack with the ball, top of the key. Finds Bowlegs. Bowlegs brings the ball, going to drive. Drive, passes off to Mack. Swing it. Mack to Bernard. Bernard to Bowlegs. He puts it up for three. Hits the side of the goal. The ball stays in play, though. Webb over to Shaw. Shaw to Phillips. Phillips on the left side of the lane. Driving back to the middle. No good. Mackins is a force down there, Joe. Yeah. All sorts of stuff down there. Mack at the right wing. Finds the other Mack. Mackins down low. Misses the first one. You know, once he gets comfortable being down there, he's going to be a force. Oh, yeah. You know what grade he's in? How old is he? He's a freshman. Oh, he's a freshman. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Phillips. Puts the ball up. No good. Bernard. Oh, picked by Frank. Ball goes out of the bound. Ball's going to stay with the Whippets, though. Mack inbounding the ball to Bernard. Bernard at the top. Around half court line, around the timeline. Holding the ball. Varnum 23, Sasako 18. Mack looking down low, turns the ball over. Phillips with Sasako has the ball, walking it up. Passes it to number 21, Webb. Webb back to Phillips. Phillips back to Webb. He shoots that long three. No good. Rebound, Whippets. Mack bringing the ball up. Bow legs with the ball now. Bow legs swinging the ball to Mack. Now the Matkins in the corner. Driving baseline back to Mack. Bow legs to the deep three. No good. <laughs> Phillips driving with the ball. Blocking foul on Bow legs. Matt coming out for a breather. No, just Shaw working down low, unable to convert. Matt pushing the pressure for the whippets, driving baseline, shoots it. No good, but the Bernard's right there for the rebound, puts it back up. No good, but Matt gets his offensive rebound and brings the ball back out to the side. I don't know how many rebounds Matt got, but he just keeps getting rebounds. He finds <laughs> himself in the right place at the right time. Bowlegs with the ball. Finds Mack in the corner. No good. Got a foul. Got a foul. Foul by Zapata. There you go. Every time you say his name right, I'm going I'm to give you props. <laughs> oh, it's already one and one. So Sasaka find themselves in the bonus, the one and one bonus. Phillips going to the line to shoot one and one. Varnum's up by five with 440 left in this first half. Mackins with another rebound. Bernard bringing the ball up. Bernard to Bowlegs. Bowlegs back to Bernard in the corner for a three. No good. Mackins. That ball gets the rebound, puts it up, and gets fouled, going to the line for two Bruiser. More. Bruiser right there, Bruiser. <laughs> you need to stop hitting me with that notepad, too. I, so, I just get so excited. I'm, I just, <laughs> it's, my, it's my key to you. Like That's my, <laughs> that's my uh, indicator, so that way you know when to talk. <laughs> oh, what happened? Bolex comes coming out. Oh, bathroom break. Bathroom break. <laughs> Take off running to the locker room. 
Mackins with that free throw brings the score to 25 to 18. Franks driving down the lane. Oh, good take by Franks. Oh, he was playing with the wrong shoes on. Oh. Quinn Bowleg just came out the locker room with some new shoes. Make him like my Kundalini. <laughs> Last night, the Varnum Whippets traveled to Oktaha and beat Class 2 ranked team by one point last night. It was a good game. Aaron Dondo at the line, no good. Rebound number 10, Cody. Franks with the ball. Driving into the lane against Mackins. Frank's kind of getting into the lane and doing whatever he wants to, causing some issues for Mackins because Franks can contort his body in all sorts of different ways to get to the rim. Yeah, that was a good take. He just keeps driving, driving, keep being aggressive. It's working. Three-point game here. Both teams in the one-on-one -on -one bonus. I keep looking at our video screen, and it looks like it's a big OA <laughs> instead of the V because we're, all, I guess, on the visitor oh, yeah, side, huh? Right, upside down, yeah. Mac walking the ball up. Good down low matchup between Shaw and Matkins. Franks with a tough finish. Tough finish. The pass by Mac. Franks with a three. Bernard bringing the ball up. Finds Mac in the corner who shoots a three and it's good. Good shot. Good attacking kick. Brings the lead back for Varnum to six. Frank's running up the ball. To Webb who shoots a three, no good. Mackin with the rebound. The Overby. Mac with the ball at top. Shoots a floating jumper at the free throw line, no good. But Big Mackins with the offensive rebound. He is working down there. The press by the Whippets. Frank dishes the ball off. The web. Back to Franks. Franks is getting into the basket. Unable to convert that one. Bernard bring the ball to court. Frank's keeping this Sasakwa team in this ball game. Bernard in the corner looking for Big Backens down low. He takes it. Yeah. 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 Causes a timeout for the Vikings. And you said he's a freshman, Jeremy? He's a freshman. He's a freshman. Looking forward to watching him these next three years. is back to a 10-point ball game. It was just a two-point ball game, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And now it's back to a 10-point ball game. Varnum causing the double team on Franks, which is preventing him from getting to the hole, which is how Sasakwa cut into that lead originally. Nothing, Joe? <laughs> I always give our rookie commentators a hard time.
All right, so the Sasakwa Vikings bringing the ball up. Minute 30 left. Moving the ball around. Frank Trying driving to, find to the basket. Franks. Yeah. Just to, that play to get Franks to the hole. They moved him to the, the right side of the court, which we haven't seen Franks on the right side of the court to get him to the hole. Beautiful play drawn up by Coach Jones on that one. Bernard driving to the to the goal. No good. Shaw with the rebound out to Webb. Webb bringing the ball up for the Vikings. Shaw. Shaw the Palmer in the corner for three. three. No good. That ball had no spin in it whatsoever. It looked straight flat, too. Mack bringing the ball up on the right side. With the steal. Cooney. Here we go. He's, driving he's going the all the way. That's it. Was That's he it. said? Call it to charge. Oh, we got to travel. Oh, we got to travel. Two different cars Which in the court. I did see yeah. that right there. Yep. Turnover, so Whippets ball with 25 seconds left in this first half. <laughs> Mack with the ball. Four. Good. Top. No good. Time, folks. That is halftime. And so that brings your halftime score 34 to 26, an eight point lead for the Vernon Whippets. All right, folks, this is the last stop of minute. And we will be right back. Go ahead and do the intro, Ludian.
Start of the third quarter. And here. we're back here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, let me get over <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Started the third period. Mac for the three. Good battle down low. Big Mackens with the rebound. Mac driving dishes off to Zapata. Because of that hustle, they got two points out of that. So good hustle. Ten point game right now with 7 17. And started this third quarter. Loose ball. Ball's going to stay with the Vikings. Oh, there's a loose shoe by Franks. Who traveled? You think the shoe had anything to do with that, Deloney? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Did you ever lose a shoe when you played? No. <laughs> Mac walking up the ball. Bernard for a long three, no good. Palmer with the rebound, passes to Phillips, who's going to walk it up. Max playing some defense on him. Mac from that very famous line of Mac boys, the Mac family. Pretty Shout good. out to all the Macs. Uh, pretty good leaders. They're known for that. Mac driving down the lane, no good. Left it short there. Frank with the ball, working on Bernard, half court. Phyllis with the deep three. Ooh, good block out. I wonder how many rebounds Mackin has. Oh, man, he has at least 10. Double, double. Not oh, yeah. Zapata with the ball at top to key. This is Trying to get the ball to Bernard, but Frank's causing some issues. Defensive half right here, isn't it? Defensive half. Yep. Oh, yeah, one more. Bernard drove down the baseline, went up for a reverse left-handed layup, got fouled. Two so free throws. Bernard going to the line. We have some celebrities standing next to us here in Varnum, Oklahoma. Varnum Zone. Varnum Zone. All state. What year is that? 2013. Zach Sell. Alongside of his cousin, Varnum. Also Varnum's very own, Mr. Jake Tiger. Jake, what year were you all state? <laughs> Another rebound by Mackins. Mack bringing up the ball, passes to Aaron Dondo. Oh, oh, Mack in the corner. His own cousin calling him out, I think, a little bit. <laughs> that's, that's family for you. Zapata to Chino. Frank's already bringing that ball all the way to the other side. <laughs> Driving down the lane. Floater. Tough floater there. <laughs> Look like Varnum slowing it up a little bit, Delaney. Yeah. Controlling the pace, though. There he is down low. Darren Dondo looking down to Matkins. He turns around but gets met by Shaw. He gets fouled. Two free throws. Shaw, he might look a little undersized to Matkins, but he can hold his own down there. Oh, my 
Two free throws here for Matkins. He has a nice shot for a big guy. Freshman. Second one's coming up. Well, they say he's 6'6". Six, six. They say he's 6'6". Six, six. He almost looks a little taller than that. Phillip bringing the ball back up. Oh, that looked like a carry. And it was. Good call. My eyes don't deceive me, <laughs> even in my old age. Bernard bringing the ball up for the Whippets. Oh, Zapata yeah, in the corner. Two not, a shoot, not afraid to shoot that ball. Oh, Atkins good rebound. With the, oh, no good. Phillips going to the hole. Blocking foul. Uh oh, two. <laughs> two <laughs> Matt curled up with Aaron Dondo <laughs> down on the baseline, and they had a special moment together. <laughs> they both fouled, so. <laughs> Aaron Dondo still trying to shake it off, looks He's like. smiling about it. Aaron Dondo has that uh, shiner, too, on his left eye yeah. from playing Okta Oktaha last night. He's one of the Warriors on this team. Yeah. Vikings with a second chance here. Mac bringing the ball up. Pass to Arredondo. Zapata to Chino. Hadam, how you dos? They left him open, so he took the shot. Charge. Arredondo takes another charge. Mac bringing it up. <laughs> Deep to Aaron Dondo oh, with the offensive rebound. He's in there banging. I think he boxed out Matkins. Mac come flying in and hustle play, but misses. Vikings ball. Phillips walking up the ball against the pressure of Matt. Frank's driving down low, but blocked by Matkins. Mack with the ball. Bernard in the corner feeding Matkins down low. Finishes Three guys. Vikings. Three guys and still wasn't able to stop Matkins on that low post. Ardano, he was able to sacrifice his body for the team here. Mack pushing up the ball, hits Phillip in the head. Steals it though. Phillips with the two with the layup. The finish by Phillips. Kayla Mack holding the ball, walking it up. Minute left in this third period. Varnum 46, the soccer 31. Swinging the ball to Zapata. Zapata puts it up. Not, no good. Aaron Dondo with the offensive rebound yeah. to Bernard. Bernard with a three. Let's go. And it's good. 
Barnum just moving the ball around. Yep. Yeah, open shots. 45 seconds left in this third. Palmer finds a driving Franks. Franks unable to handle the pass, and so the ball goes out of bounds. Turnover to the Whippets. Mack walking up the ball. Taking his time here, Joe. Looks like they might hold for the last shot. Sixteen seconds left. Bernard with the ball now at half court and foul. Blocking foul on Franks. That's the Sockles' fourteen foul. Timeout called by Varnum. So Jeremy, you're always asking me the questions. What's the Sockle got to do to get back in this game? I think they've got to minimize their turn turnovers. You know, it's 18. It's an 18-point deficit right now. They need to stop that penetration of Varnum because Varnum's just kind of taking their time with the ball. But it's Sasaki needs to kind of do a better job of making points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I know, yeah, I know that yeah. they're getting shots and they're getting <laughs> to the hole. They're just not making them. Yeah, yep. yep. Smart, smart and good shots only, huh? Yep. So it's eight seconds left in this third. Again, 18-point game. Varnum, 49. Sasaka, 31. Let's see what Varnum's coach drew up for this last shot. Frank Garden, Mack, drawing baseline. Knocks the ball out, so it's going to stay here with Varnum. 4.8. Bernard with the three, no good, and that's the third. Congratulations, Melissa Green. And so we want to present on behalf of the Booster Club and everyone who participated. Eight hundred dollars cash to Zach South. And eight hundred dollars to Melissa Green from the software. Thank you again to everyone who participated. One quick picture. And so we mentioned earlier we do have Jake Tiger with the Historic Preservation Office with us. And so, Jake, tell us a little bit about what's going on over at HPO. Uh, right now we're just getting ready to do a museum exhibit starting uh, March 20th. The Seminole Nation Historic Preservation Office teamed up with the Seminole Nation Museum. And we acquired, uh, uh, I want to say about 60 plus photographs of Miccosukee Academy. And so it's the largest collection of photographs of the school uh, in the entire world, bigger than the Western collections and bigger than the uh, 
um, bigger than uh, Oklahoma, or Oklahoma Historical Society. So we want to share the information, so we are going to uh, have been collecting photographs, artifacts, documents, attendance rolls, and it's going to be the most detailed exhibit on the Kasuki Academy. That will be going on starting uh, uh, March 20th through June 16th. But no, Jake, that's going to be a great exhibit over there at the museum. And so I know everyone will want to take a little bit of time out of their day and definitely go check it out. Something that you can't see anywhere else, huh? Yeah, yeah. yesterday I was, I was going through the National Archives on uh, Mikasuki Academy. And it was a, a, a superintendent's report for 1922. And I found my great-grandpa, uh, Homer Miller. And I, actually, it's pretty funny because... I want to, I found his name in there, but he actually went to school here at Varnum in 1936 to graduate in class. So that, that's pretty neat to see that. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, Jake. We appreciate it. We'll let you get back to the game. Great game here. Great night here in uh, Varnum, Oklahoma. Sasak, we're coming to town on this Saturday night. So, Mado. Delaney? Yes. Did you feel pressure doing that tonight? That was easy. Pulling out the ticket. That's what I live for, pressure. Yeah. Well, back to this ball game with 6.55 left. Varnum 51, or 54, Sasaka 31, 23-point ball game. Bernard with the ball to Zapata. He's not afraid to shoot that ball, is he? No, he knocked a couple down already. Is that Phillips driving to the hole Phillip. for two? Yeah. It's a tough, strong finish there. Phillips went for a steal, wasn't able to grab the ball. Bernard with the three, no good. Franks with the long pass to Phillips. Driving to the hole, and it's good. Giving up two layups back to back. That's not a good sign. Mac stumbling into the lane. Arredondo for Arredondo three. That's another good. one. Two teamers. Sasak will walk in the ball around the top of the key. Off the foot of Phillips to Palmer. He finds an open bank dislayed on the Saturday. He called it, I think. Timeout or subs. Timeout sub. They cut it to 19. Who are the new players we got coming in? Gifitza. Number 33, Stewart. Stewart, Stewart, V Hill. Number Olegs. 34, Vigil, V Hill. V Hill, Mac. Mac, Overby. Overby, Bowlegs. Solid crew out there. Yeah. Bowlegs, top of the Bo key. Bo Let's it go. Tucina. Got that swag. Well, but the ball for the Vikings. Find Shaw in the corner. Ball goes out of bounds. Whip it ball. Whippets running their play here to Matt. Oh, left it short. Frank driving down the lane. Got him another layup. Trent Mack bringing the ball up for the Whippets now. Bow leg on the wings. Good look. Good movement by the Overby with the offensive rebound. You got a foul. Though. Overby gets fouled. Two shots. Anthony Overby to the free throw line for two.
Hurst wins up. He knocks it down. First one was good. 21 point lead for the Whippets. Knocks down make, the second one. Make that 22, Delaney. Delaney's got a big old grin on his face right now. It must be good to see the alma mater win, huh? <laughs> yeah. Webb not giving up on that play. Gets it in. Oh. V Hill. Oh, hustle by bow legs, but Viking ball here. More subs for the Vikings. Is that a whip it? Yes, yeah, a mascot. Whip it, man. Yep. Make live in the flesh. I think that's the first time I've ever seen the mascot over here. <laughs> Here with oh, Trenton Mack. Oh, look along. That's Stewart. Stewart with the follow. Ran the floor, got an easy bucket. Let's go, Colt. Some more whippets about to sub in. We have a fresh five subbing in for the Whippets here. Yeah. Looks like Coach is giving some of his bench some time to play. They have a big lead. He can afford to do that right now. It's good to see those at the end of the bench getting some playing yeah, time. Though. Get the young ones in there. They've been battling out in practice too. Land showing off some dribbling skills on the corner. <laughs> Two minutes left in this ball game. It looks like coaches are bringing in some fresh ones. Last game of the regular season, I, I believe. Yeah, might as well let them play. <laughs> game doesn't really matter. It District doesn't. seedings are already set up. Yeah, doesn't matter. Well, unless you make it to state, it does. Gentry. Ball. Somebody's gonna get a big bucket here, I believe. Two cheating. Oh. They just did hockey stuff. So. Oh, 
And that's the end of the ball game here in Varnum, Oklahoma. We're the final score, 64 to 42. Varnum whip it, take it by 22. As both teams go into district play this week, or this coming week, a good, uh, I think a good game for both teams. Delaney, what, you got anything to say? I look forward to districts next week. That's what they've been waiting for. Playoffs come around, so yeah. I think I think with everybody putting in their best shots, it's time. Time to go. Huh? Time to strap the boots up and get to work. Yep. Just a reminder: please stay off of the gym floor with street shoes on. Please stay off of the gym floor with your street shoes on. Yep. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that's it here from Varnum, Oklahoma again. The Varnum Whippets take both the girls team. Coach, take a, have a good one. The Varnum Whippets take both the girls and the boys game. Both teams get ready for the playoffs. We hope you enjoyed the night. For media director Mark Williams, producer Josiah Jimboy, Madigo's Market. Nak Magata. Madigo's Market. Uh huh. Yeah, Hadan Chi Chagasli. Anio. We'll see you later. Have a good night. We'll catch you in the playoffs. All right.